Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton here. So we're back with a brand new video and I wanted to talk about APIs because they're very important to understand, especially if you're a web developer, you're more than certain going to be interacting with an API at some point, even if you're a front-end developer. So it's important that you understand what APIs are and how they're used. So API stands for Application Program Interface. So imagine a developer writes some code and they want someone else to use it. Well, they can bundle all that code together, they can package it, and they can put it somewhere on some repository that someone else can just download. And then the developer that downloads that code can import that code into their project and they can select which functionalities they want to use. Now there are different types of APIs. The most popular ones are web APIs, but there are also different APIs that may be only accessible for for certain companies, certain teams, you might not want to expose your API to the outside world. So you'll keep that inner source. Or for example, let's say if you're building a game, the game itself might have their own API that could possibly interact with another API. Now, the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this whole video is that APIs allow applications to interact with each other. So imagine Discord and Spotify. We know that if we connect our Spotify account, the Discord, our Discord presence will display our current song being played if we allow it to be displayed. Now that's the Discord API interacting with the Spotify API. We're not going to go super in depth into it, but I want you guys to understand that APIs allow interaction between different applications. Now, if you've ever used an external package downloaded via NPM for Node, PIP for Python, or Maven for Java, those are also considered APIs, right? Because they are applications and they have a collection of methods, classes, namespaces, etc. And it allows the developer to import, they can import it, they can integrate those methods and classes with their application. So APIs don't need to just necessarily live on the web. Okay, you can also download the code and then use it for your own project. So think about any particular application, like I said before, that integrates other third party services. So we'll take a look at Uber, for example, and we're going to imagine the flow at a high level. So we're not going to look at the underlying infrastructure and how things work underneath the hood. We're just going to look at it from a high level perspective that anyone could probably guess how it worked. And we know that Uber uses Google Maps and Google itself owns this technology. And they're like, hey, look, let's take Google Maps and let's make it accessible by other developers so they can use our technology and build awesome applications on top of Google Maps. So you can imagine that if you've used Uber before, you're probably wondering, well, how does Uber know when we've requested a ride? And how does our application know that our Uber driver has arrived? Now, this is where HTTP comes in. Now, there are different protocols that the web uses to make requests, and HTTP is the common one for web APIs, and HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And HTTP is used to fetch resources. So for example, whenever you open up your browser and you're typing in a website, that website itself is hosted by some server, and that server is going to return the resource. It could be either an HTML document, it can be an image, it can be a CSS file, it can be a text file, whatever it is. And there are many different HTTP request methods that we're going only going to look at two in this video, but in another video, we'll cover all of the other HTTP request methods. So an HTTP get request is used whenever you need to get a resource. So whenever you open up your browser and you type in the URL, you're having the browser performing that get request. Okay, obviously it doesn't say that it's making a get request, but that's what it's doing under the hood. And the server that hosts that resource can return anything like I mentioned before. It can return HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JSON, an image, videos, files, whatever. An HTTP POST request, however, is used whenever you need to create a resource. So when you are signing for a website, you're creating a new account where the credentials will be saved on the server side. It's going to be saved on the database that provides services for that website. Whenever you log into a website, you're creating a new session, a new stateful session between yourself and the server. So let's go back to our Uber example. So I don't have a full on Uber application mock that I can show you, but this is what the application looks like for those of you guys who don't know, but you can honestly take the concepts that we went over and apply that to different applications. So for example, if I'm looking at this Uber app, I see this see routes button and I can imagine, okay, if I click on this, what is it going to do? It's going to display all of the possible routes from location A to location B, right? From our starting point to our destination. So when you click on that button, it should perform a get request because you want to get all of the routes to that destination. Now, I don't have another image to show you guys, unfortunately, but imagine this, right? Let's say, for example, if there's a button that says request a ride, you can imagine that when I click on that button, what it's going to do is it's going to make an HTTP post request, right? So requesting a ride is a post request. What it's going to do is it's going to take all of our account credentials. It's going to charge our account, our bank account, a payment, right, of either, you know, whatever amount the Uber ride costs. 
and then it's going to create a new document or some kind of record in the database that indicates that this is the ride, all the details, when it was initiated, who initiated, the pickup location, the destination, etc. You can obviously, when you create an Uber account, that's a post request. Whenever you're retrieving nearby drivers, that's a get request. And of course, we can look at a whole bunch of different applications and look at it from a high level. So hopefully this Uber example makes sense. And hopefully you guys understand APIs much more clearly. Obviously, we didn't go super in depth on HTTP, but get and post requests are the two common ones that you're going to be using majority of the time. So it's very important that I go over this. So anyways, the reason why I wanted to make this video was to give you guys an introduction to APIs because we are going to be using APIs to build out our application. That's how we're going to retrieve data from our web server. And that's how we're going to be creating data that our web server is going to handle by saving it to a database. And that's pretty much it for this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.